Good evening. We'll call to order the May 25th, 2023 Ventnor City Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Everyone please rise for the flag salute. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble. Here. Commissioner Mento. Here. Mayor Langrea. Turn that. Just turn it off. Here. Sorry. We're dealing with an echo here. There we go. Um, Pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the law. Uh, tonight, we're going to start off with uh, an appointment to our school board. We'll pass. We'll ask for a motion to pass Resolution 2023-186, uh, resolution appointing uh, to our Ventnor School Board, Dr. John Baker. He's here tonight, so we'll swear him in afterwards. But if we get a motion in a second for that. Uh, thank you. Yes, motion uh, to Ezra. Uh, uh, as, as, as as described. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble. Yes. Commissioner Mento. Yes. Mayor Langrea. Yes. Okay. With that, Dr. Baker, if you want to come up, we'll swear you in. You have that for me? I do. I put right on the back. Ah, perfect. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> So left hand on the Bible, raise your right hand. There you go. Repeat after me, I'll go with a short sentence just so it makes it easy. State your name. I, John Baker. You solemnly swear or affirm, solemnly, solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And I will bear true faith and allegiance. I will bear true faith and allegiance. Allegiance to the same as the government established and to the same the government established in the United States, in the United States, and in this state, and in this state, under the authority of the people, the authority of the people. And I will faithfully, I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly perform all the duties, and justly perform all the duties of the office of, of the office of school board member, school board member. Effective date 525, 2023, you want to say that. According to the best of my skill and ability, according to the best of my skill and ability, congratulations! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, Doc, we're going to need your signature on this. Okay. Deed your house. <laughs> Uh, you did say it's not a paying job, right? You did. <laughs> That's, I wouldn't take it anyway. We'll fill in the rest of this. Thanks. Appreciate Good luck. to stay here? Or? That's up to you. You don't need to. It's going to be fairly <laughs> Of the yep, I will. Yep. Okay. So next up, uh, we just did Dr. Baker's oath of office. We really appreciate our volunteers in this tent. Dr. Baker has been looking to get on our board of ed for quite some time, and, and we welcome them to that spot. Uh, we have some presentations to go through tonight. The first of which is for someone we lost in our community. It's for um, uh, Mr. Frank Donato. We are going to dedicate the ramp going over Portland Avenue in his honor. Um, reached out, the family had reached out to us. Um, Sean Gleason was very active in, in doing that as well. So we have a, I guess, a proclamation or a, a resolution we're going to pass, and I'll read that into the record. <clears throat> city of Ventnor honoring Frank Donato. Whereas Frank Donato was a lifelong Ventnor resident of Ventnor City, whereas Frank loved the ocean, could be found every day sitting in his chair on the beach. And as whereas Frank was known for his athleticism, enjoyed playing Little League baseball, hutch basketball, and is still a co-record holder for scoring 50 points in a single game at the St. Lawrence School. Um, well, that's gone. So he's definitely going to stay in that, that record forever. So, And a standout football player for Holy Spirit High School. He also enjoyed kayaking and jogging. 
Whereas above all else, Frank loved his family, his wife, Jeannie, his five children, two grandchildren and great grandchildren. And whereas the mayor and commissioners of the city of Ventnor wish to honor Mr. Frank Donato by naming Portland Avenue ramp, Frank Donato way. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the mayor and the Ventnor City Board of Commissioners that Frank Donato be honored and forever remembered. So thank you. Bye. <laughs> if you want to come up, I have this. Um, we're going to communicate with you guys when you want to actually put the sign up and cover the sign okay. to let us know. We'll pick a good date for it sometime in June, maybe. Okay. And we're a little busy this weekend. Okay. <laughs> But, but we <laughs> 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 Here we are. <laughs> 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 Yeah. John's got to get another side. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. 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 Thank you guys so much. Thank you very 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 much. Thank Thank you. <laughs> 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 We're just going to let the room clear a little bit, and then we have one more um, proclamation. Actually, several more, I should say. Where's my notes? Okay, next up, we have the Lewis Bay Scholarship participants. Uh, the city back in 2016, when Commissioner Creeble and myself and Mayor Holtzman uh, were elected, we started participating in this process. It's an essay scholarship for participants. 2010, our first year, we had one of our applicants win one of the three $1,000 scholarships that is offered by the state of New Jersey League of Municipalities. This year, 50 other municipalities participated. We have five. We had five applicants. Very difficult for our volunteer committee to make a decision with on whom passed on to the next level. Um, we want to announce that we had. Let's see, we have certificates for Mia DeMarco, Rosie Miltenberger, Cooper Kane, and Dory Argaden. Argonon. Thank Argonon. you. Uh, and the semifinalist from our level was Jackson Barry. Did I pronounce that right? All right. Uh, his essay was given to the New Jersey League Municipality, and he completed competed with the other 50 towns. But unfortunately, he did not win the top prize, but we're proud of him. We're proud of all of our essay writers. So we have proclamations for each one of those. Um, one for I'm gonna bring up bring up uh, Jackson and give him his because he's here. Are there any other participants here? 
them. To, so we'll get them to the families. You guys want to come on up? Just your resident. Don't smile, Jackson. All right, there you go. Lisa, I'll give these to you to get to them. Yep, Go. that sounds good. Okay. All right. Next time, I think we're just going to stay down at the table and do these yeah. instead of getting up and up and down each time with microphones. All right. So that's it with presentations. Tonight, we don't have department head reports, but I think for June or maybe July, we're going to start having them come back in. I agree. That once a month. Uh, to get everybody up to speed on what each department's doing and what's happening. The same with capital. We did just put a, a capital presentation together that we put on our newsletter. Mm -hmm. That came out very well. Ursula did a great job with that. Mm -hmm. You can see what capital improvements we've done in the city over the last four or five years. Um, and you'll be able to follow that because we're going to keep updating that. The following items are scheduled for action tonight. We will go through the agenda in this. Um, workshop and then we will vote on things once we go into the full um, official meeting. So the first item is introduction or actually ordinance introduction of 2023-013 is an ordinance of the city of Ventnor amending the supplementing chapter 214 vehicles and traffic park traffic part one traffic and parking articles 11 sections 214 to 29 schedule one no parking deals with an issue on Frankfurt Avenue where it's between two driveways, I understand, and it's too small for a parking space. So this gets tagged as a no parking area. Correct. There's uh, there's really not enough room for a legal parking place in between two right uh, and two curb cuts. Right. So it's it, we're it, we're codifying the non parking spot. And that's typical. We do that throughout the city. Making and we also make sure it's painted. Gotcha. We will have public hearings and adoption on the following ordinances. First one is 2023-009 regarding violations and penalties and operations of motorized vehicles. This deals with motorized vehicles on the boardwalk. Um, any discussion on that before we already talked about it? It'll, we'll have a public hearing after this. Right. Good with uh, that one? Yep. Okay. Uh, so it's, um, but it's, it, it's really the existing um ordinances correct and they're we're increasing the penalties that's correct those ordinances have been on the books since 1972 correct um, next ordinance is 2023-010 uh amending section 197 11.1 littering and care containment of construction sites it's basically requiring construction fence around properties under construction typically demolitions and reconstruction um if you're doing significant renovation threshold that would be required for that. Any questions there? I, I only noticed one thing, and you know this better than I. So um, that the fence is two feet. That didn't seem like to be much of a fence to me, but. It, it's there to stop debris from blowing along the ground. It's okay. not security of the site. Got it. If you drive through Longport and Margate, they use them to maintain the trash and materials on the property. Got it. It's a replacement for silk fence. Yes. I took you didn't hear. She just asked about the height of the fence. These are temporary fences. The stakes are driven into the ground and then plywood is, is made to make a fence. And actually, if you I was corrected at a at a at a at a symposium on litter and construction debris is the largest. Largest source of litter in most towns. So this is a good ordinance in that effect to keep it off the streets. It came to us through through code. They said it was a good suggestion and we agreed. Next one is ordinance 2023-011, code chapter 149, registration of rental units to impose inspection requirements on lead-based paints. This is something coming down from the state of New Jersey. Uh, we're just implementing it into our ordinances. We've also, in other resolutions, partnered with the ACIA to do inspections on this um, to help us offset the cost of that. Uh, they, will, they will manage those inspections for us. Any questions on that one? Yep. 
Last one is Ordinance 2023-012. Uh, it's requiring certain rental units to obtain mercantile licenses and supplementing ordinance for regulations of short-term rentals. Uh, we talked about that excessively last month. We'll have another, we'll have the final public hearing on that this evening. Um, any questions from you guys on that before we move forward? Nope. All right. We will have resolutions adopted by consent. Resolution 172 through 185 will be done by consent. The first one is 2023-172, authorizing seasonal hiring of class one officers for the city of Ventnor. Looks like we're doing one, two, three, four, five of them. Uh, Joe Dow, Aaron. Dewey's, I'm um, really struggling with that last name. Dewey's Plieri, you got that one? Mm. I don't have that one. Sorry. Uh, Ethan Lacotte, uh, Tiara Racine, and Isabella Zangi. So we'll be bringing them on board as our specials. That'll help offset a lot of time on the boardwalk, beaches, and throughout our commercial districts of the city. Yeah, we were hoping for more. We were looking for eight. Yeah. But only uh, we were only able to get five that were qualified and, and available for training. And um, you know, well, I think we get, we we can increase um, some hours with other officers um, to help fill the gaps if we need to. Okay, I think it's a you know, like you said, we wanted a few more, but you know, we'll yeah, we budgeted for eight, that. so there that can that that difference in time could be over can be taken up with over time with other officers. Gotcha. Thanks. Thanks for coordinating that, Commissioner. Uh, next one is resolution 172, suspension of parking meters located in municipal parking lot, park mobile zone 60101, beach block Newport, zone 60102, and 6500 block of Atlantic Avenue, uh, unit block of South Newport Avenue. It's around the farmer's market. If you're yeah. to the farmer's market, what this is going to do is give you free parking during the farmer's market hours from 8 a.m. to noon on Fridays. Right. Um, Commissioner Creeble came back from a a trip abroad and, and came up with this idea that he had well, Canada, Canada, a, <laughs> eh? um, so it was, it was a, a great idea and we supported it. And I think we, it's a good idea. We got a stern warning from the locals that you will get ticketed if you left your car out during the off hours in Montreal at a farmer's market, but uh, there and in, um, in uh, North of there, um, and other cities do this. It's just something that I think we partner with the farmer's market. It's a, it's a quasi city, operation yep. came to us uh i think andy's here from the very beginning and this is just something that um we think we can extend this small kindness um um and uh and and co coordinating with things like this and the police officers we uh, we're discussing maybe adding it to other parts of the city but there's a lot more orchestration that has to go into that and codification to do it in any in other business zones but we're open to those discussions and i'm having those with staff good good you okay with that maria mm -hmm. uh resolution 174 approval to submit a grant application uh for resilient promoting resilient operations transformative efficient cost-saving transportation a lot of this has to do with light timing of lights um we're going to apply for four, more funding for synchronized traffic signals similar to what the county has done on ventnor avenue um those lights are not synchronized yet you will notice that if you drive through town uh, that project is about to be finished, and they will finally synchronize all those lights from Wellington Avenue through Ventnor, down uh, Ventnor Avenue, all the way to Margate and through Longpool. So eventually that'll be all synchronized. Are we good with that one? Yeah. Resolution 175 is so authorizing the hiring of following employees to serve as temporary medical technicians, uh, EMTs for the beach, essentially for the beach, um, allows our, our beach patrol guys to really focus on their role um gets better care to these guys quicker uh more and more needed care if, if need be heightened heightened resources um that they might need so they're there for the heavier emergencies i think it's a great program yeah chief cahill chief, yep <laughs> chief cahill started during covid i think was really the impetus for this and the and we had more than um i think we had uh i think we had four to begin with but now we're having is that right and then we started with two per day right right and, and and the result is that he was needed he was it was someone that they could get care to people faster and and um some didn't need to have an ambulance but um he was a he was it was it was something that was of value to the to the residents and um and a program that i think makes a lot of sense he can get he can get he can get to them faster 
when they're needed. Agreed. Agreed. And it's been working well. It's been a good source of safety, an overlayer of safety on the beach. Yeah, a second layer. Where are you good with that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, resolution 176 is approval of special items of revenue and appropriation. Um, that's municipal alliance funding that comes into us, two different um, funds that we're getting, about $6,200. 177 is a permanent appointment of, of Quayne Harvey, a senior account accountant in the finance department. She's been on for the last four or five months as a interim, I guess it is. And now we're bringing her in full, you know, she's been full time, but now it's a permanent position. Yeah, this is a civil service right. appointment. Gotcha. Good with that, Tim? Mm -hmm. All right. She was a good find. Yes, she was. Yeah, Very she good. Was. Um, resolution 178, authorizing the administrator to submit an application to the congestion mitigation air quality improvement grant. Uh, this is the CMAC. This is funding, additional funding to help us with our traffic signals we're doing on Ventnor Avenue uh, in the North Beach section. Um, this is more funding along that same project and that we can use either there or elsewhere in the city. You good there? Yes. Yep. 179 is authorizing the refund of a building department permit in the amount of $179 to Hutchinson Plumbing and Cooling. A refund of their permits. 179. Uh, 180 is authorizing closing out of escrow accounts. That's typical. Land use and other applications have escrows that weren't fully used. They get dispersed back to the applicants. Resolution 181, lead paint grant assistance program, New Jersey Department of Community Affairs. Um, it's an application to apply for about $13,600 of DCA funds to help us in, in improve those inspections for lead-based paint. Uh, resolution 182, authorizing the third amendment to the ESIP implementation contract with DCO Energy. We purchased a um, electric vehicle for code. And if you came in, well, you can't come in the back door, but we have our charging station installed. That should be going online in the near future. Um, so there's a $13,000 reduction to the ESIP program for the for the purchase of that vehicle. Good with that? Yes. Maria, good there? Um, what did I say? I said 32K, yeah. Yeah. Reduction. Yeah. The whole project is $5 million. Got it, yep. Okay, okay. good. 13, okay. That was the one before. I may have said 13. Yeah. <laughs> Resolution 183, authorizing part-time employment to Michael Miller for the Ventnor City Police Department. If people remember, he was our former chief of the police department. He's going to come back and help them continue their accreditation and, and help them get over some hurdles there. Yeah, um, we have um, honestly a, a difficult troop to, stat, uh, to task ratio for the things that uh, include um, uh, the the statutory uh, uh, things that, um, uh, that that he he had worked on in the past. So it's kind of a way of freeing up full-time uh, officers and and allowing someone who had basically started the program in the city um, and continuing it here to keep us uh, accredited. Um, so it's it's really going to be a good, I think going to be a good fit. And it has, we have, his, we'll, we'll be able to Tap into some of his experience as well. He's got extensive in that. That's good. Mm -hmm. Good proposal. Um, resolution 184 is authorizing part-time employment for the city of Ventnor for the Department of Revenue and Finance beach tag checkers. Um, recreation aid is their title. Um, we're hiring, well, I think, 20 of them. Was that the number? Mm -hmm. right around that number? Um, what I will say is this, this is a very difficult job, and these are young people that come in and take this position. Um, we ask them, we hope that everyone's here tonight, we would treat them with respect on the beach. There is problems with that every year. It does escalate. Um, when it does, the police department shows up and then it's even more escalated. So we ask you to treat them with respect. They're only doing their job. You're required to have beach badges. It's not their call. It's not their fault that you're required to have them. Um, so please treat them with the utmost of respect. So 30 kids, 30 kids, 30 kids. So. All right. 185 is authorizing seasonal employment for the city of Ventnor um, Recreation Department and, Recre and Department of Public Works. That's uh, that's our camp groups, right? These are our camp supervisors, camp counselors um, that come in for all of our sports camps. Yeah. Court attendants. Pickleball court attendants. Go ahead. Well, talking to your mic. Okay. 
So we have uh, the camp employees and we have the pickleball court attendants and also for tennis. And then we have the surf camp and um, beach crew. Okay. I just want to take a quick thank you to Diane for yeah. the help that you're giving us this season. Above and beyond. Appreciate everything thank that you. you've done in the past. Looking forward to your help. Thank you. Uh, that's it for resolutions. We will then go into bills and payroll. And I don't see Amy here. So someone else will give us. You have those numbers for us, Lisa. Good. Uh, discussion item, Commissioner Crable, you had one? Yes, actually, it ties into pickleball and recreation. So um, one of the things I uh, met with the rec department, um, Diane is, is president of, and we discussed uh, briefly the recommendation for tennis and pickleball courts um, going forward. Um, the recommendation is in... Uh, that that for tennis and pickleball court instructors at the Ventnor courts, and this may also lead to other people that want to give classes in Ventnor, uh, that they must present an instructor certification uh, with they they need to have personal name, information, email address, and phone number, um, proof of liability insurance, holding the city of Ventnor harmless. I might I might add that the participants would also have to have a a waiver of um, uh, holding the Venner City harmless. That's something that other cities do. So, and so this is merely like, this is merely uh, this year um, uh, tightening up the, the, the record keeping for people that are um, giving instruction on the tennis courts. Um, uh, and then also uh, clarifying the times that they can, um, they can have these, um these classes so that they don't interrupt what the the public is using those courts for right. so flexible times and times that are sort of off hours and that the courts uh are paid through court reserves so that they're not interfering with people that are uh, you know renting courts uh if you use the same process as somebody renting a court it, exactly so yeah. we're just looking for fairness um and if you had anything else to offer or to mention on that or did i sum it up Pretty much, so this is in a way a um, a, a heads up to the, to to folks that are do, doing this sort of um, because it is city it is city property. The city is going to be liable if someone does um, get get hurt. Um, so looking into next year, we have other we have people that give classes sometimes on our boardwalk, sometimes on our beaches. So this would be a, these same um, requirements. I, um, we're proposing that they would have to do, but that we would follow other cities like Margate that have an 80-20 split for the uh, the use of public fields. Um, vendors are required to um, to do that in um, in Margate. Brigantine is looking at the type of a split, and uh, Wildwood has uh, RFP contracts where uh, where where coaches and uh, pay for that, but um, but I think there's there's also there's also liabilities that I think the city should have some type of remediation for. Okay, and you'll have something written up for us that we can review through, and then correct. And we're trying to do this for next year, correct? The eighty twenty split, but this we want to do for this year. Right. Having Man, the documentation, I get that. And, we want and, this and, is right. good. Going to be done okay. this year. It's not something we need an ordinance on. It's something I wanted to make oh, sure we're all on the same page. All right. All right. With that, do you have anything for discussion? No. no. Okay. Um, public portion. This public portion will be for items that we've already discussed this evening uh, on our agenda. I will say that we do have the public hearings on the ordinances that will be in addition to this public portion. Um, so some of that comment might be better saved for the ordinance discussion, but you're certainly welcome to bring it up. What we will say is that we've got a lot of people on Zoom, a significant number of people here tonight. We will be setting a timer for about a three-minute Discussion, if it becomes longer than that, reach out to whichever commissioner is in charge of that department. We'll have further discussion. We'll put you in touch with the department head to, to try and resolve your concern. So with that, uh, if there's anyone here wishes to speak, please come up to the microphone, state your name, and make your comment. Diane, you're the first one up. <laughs> Diane. I could use my gym voice. Diane Birkbeck, 3 North Cambridge Avenue, Ventnor. Um, just the, the what we talked about with the tennis and pickleball, they would have to pay for the court, the $10 court fee at the time for each hour that they're 
uh, using it for instruction. Right. That's Correct. what I understood. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's all. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? And, Andy. And that's paid directly through court reserve. So it's been some. Yeah, uh, that's how Andy Starr, uh, 112 South Oxford. Just thank you for um, helping with the parking situation um, during the farmer's market. Uh, Commissioner Krebel, I think you described it as a small um, gift or whatever you described it and to help out. And I would disagree. It's a large one. Uh, it's it's a big deal. It really helps out uh, shoppers and vendors and, and so forth. And so I just want to say thank you for, again, supporting the farmer's market. Which opens? Tomorrow morning, 830. Thank there you. you. Go. I, um, You'll hear that about four times tonight. Yeah. Andy, I did get a, I, 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 just to make sure, I did get a text from uh, a shore maid. So I'll follow up with him to make sure everything's okay. I think he just has some cars in the parking area there. I spoke with the village. You did. Okay. Good. Tim, is the no parking at the meters on Newport for the um, participants of the farmer's market? Anybody. Uh, anybody. Anybody who's coming to, to shop there or whatever. Typically, right. There's no parking. On, there's no parking on that street right now. There's no parking signs. That that on that one side is for the participants. For them. That's yeah, Andy right. worked that out earlier. There's a bit of a conflict on Newport right. where the resolution says it's okay to park there, but you're not allowed to park. Nobody's allowed to park there except for the farmer's market. Right. It's a bit of a conflict right. in, that, in that half a block area. Right. Yeah, that's right. what I thought, but I just wanted to check because I saw it today, the signs up for no parking. Yeah, yeah there's no parking, so vendors and so forth can park there, but it's part of the it's part of the resolution tonight to, to allow parking there. So it Right, uh, that's well, probably what Shore yeah. Maid's talking about. He doesn't want to get... Conflict want to get things, yeah. And yeah, he's concerned about where to put his vehicles I'll overnight sure. and so forth. I'll make sure. Okay. Thank you. Good catch, Maria. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Hi, me. Sorry, my voice. My allergies are bad. Mimi D'Souza, 122 North Princeton. Have we opened the public comment for ordinance 2023-012 about short-term rentals yet, or is that coming? So there will be a separate public portion, but you can talk about it now as well, whatever you'd right. like. Well, so you'll get. So, uh, so just from what it, we would just like some more clarity as to actually what the language of the resolution will say, uh, the ordinance would say, because the Down Beach listing wasn't very clear whether the resolution is just summer season in terms of the time frame that the rental requirements would be the minimum rental so requirements. It's an ordinance, not a resolution. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. The ordinance that you're looking to enact, whether it's just during the summer season, what those dates are, or is it year round, the I don't think minimum number of nights that number? you're requiring certain properties to, uh, to are regulated by? Uh, 12. 12, sorry. And where would we find the exact wording of the ordinance? It's on our it's on our agenda. It's so, online. You can see it's it online. online the exact online. wording. We can give okay. you a copy. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you for that. Resolution. The website wasn't working very well today, so that's why. It was Neither was the bridge. We heard that uh, <laughs> bridge, <laughs> bridge was a problem. The um, my understanding is that it was e it was on a computer. It was easy. But if you had it tried on an iPhone, it was giving people a lot of trouble. No. I'm not sure, Mayor, that we've actually figured out what the problem was because there were computers in the building that it worked fine and other computers in the same office where it didn't. Yeah. It just I, wasn't I went on and was able to get the agenda so, today. So but the, uh, the answer to the question is these regulations are intended to be year round. Yes, they're year, year round. round. Okay. So the effective date of this is upon publication or upon this public hearing today, and it will be adopted today. Is that what the intent is? That's the intent, yes. Okay. Can I, can I just hold on to this uh, copy of the ordinance? For, sure. Read it. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, just to go through it real quick, I'll, I'll, it's highlighted on this copy so it's easy to read. Residential properties containing one bedroom and studio apartments must obtain and display an annual mercantile license, the fee for which shall be $500. One bedroom or studio apartments may rent may be rented for one or more days, but less than 30 days. Next paragraph. Residential property containing two bedrooms must obtain and display an annual mercantile license, which the fee shall be $750. Two bedroom residential properties may be rented short term for a period of not less than two days, but less than 30 days. 
The third section is residential properties containing three or more bedrooms must obtain and, and display an annual mercantile license for the fee, license the fee for which will be $1,000. Three bedroom residential properties may be rented short term for a period of not less than five days, but less than 30 days. There's several other sections in here. Um, section 149.18a, each residential rental property shall have an occupancy limit as established by the city's code officer. Um, that'll be displayed. That's what we've been talking about that for the last six to eight months. Um, next section deals with you cannot rent it if you're under 21 years of age. It also talks about having the person who's managing the property for you has to be at least 21 years of age. And that proof has to be provided. That proof of, of the manager has to be provided to the code office. Um, all short-term rental occupants must abide by the city of Ventnor's ordinances regarding noise, trash, and parking. Uh, inspected every every within 30 days of the application for the mercantile license must be delivered to the construction office. And I already talked about being the age of 21 or older um, to rent the properties. So those are the amendments that are as proposed. So, good. Hey everybody, uh, Jeff D'Angelio for North Oakland. Can I clarify a few things? So if somebody has a four night rental this summer of a three bedroom, you saying they have to cancel it after today? No, what we've stated before is that if you can demonstrate that you uh, entered into the contract prior to the effective date of this ordinance, that we would honor that. Right. Okay. Basically a grandfather clause for this summer. Okay. And then, and then another question I was, I kind of missed the last couple, but the first couple we had maybe 30, 40 people come up against the ordinance, right. Against going over two, three nights. We kind of were all agreeing. That's why we're doing it. You know, ones are bad, maybe two, maybe three. Where did five come from? When did that come in? We did some research on on other municipalities, looking at, at the number of bedrooms and limiting it that way. Mm -hmm. um, they're the properties that we have our problems with. That three are bedrooms, the, the three, three and bedrooms. above, the three, three and above, above. Okay. Are, are the are the ones that are rented as party houses, and that's what our where our problems start. We don't have the issues with the one and two bedrooms as as much because they're smaller properties. When you okay. get into units that are three and above, is where we have the issues. Okay. What about all the suggestions of things we could do outside of that? I haven't seen any of that brought up. We talked about noise devices, all that kind of stuff. So we we recommend those. We mm -hmm. did not put them in the ordinance because that's hard to uh, enforce. Um, that's something that you do as an operator. Mm -hmm. And we get that. And we, we put that out with all the meetings that we had with you and everybody else that was here. Mm -hmm. We had two separate meetings without even an ordinance being proposed. On short-term rentals, and you were at both of those. I mm -hmm. oh, the, after those are only two, yeah, right. And, uh, okay. Well, when we started introducing the ordinance, we had other people come mm -hmm. after the first introduction and raise other issues. Okay. So that's where a lot of this other stuff came from. Okay. So I mean, I can just tell you because I do this in all over the country. Yep. Um, if you take a three-bedroom, if you limit it to five nights, you're basically cutting out short-term rentals here in the off season. You really are. You you just crushed them. They're done. So, so if well, that's the intention, then Okay, it is what it is. But this town, so I'll, the I'll businesses, they're going to be done. Time's basically up, Jeff. But what I, what I'll say is, everyone has to understand: you guys are operating businesses in a residential neighborhood. So people live there; they live there year round. They may come here for the summer, and then they have to live next to a property that's being rented out every other day, with people coming home two, three o'clock in the morning, taking up all the parking spaces, and then turning over again after a couple of days. So we have we have to balance up here. Mm -hmm. We have to balance what we're doing, and that's what we're trying to do. This is this is something we're going to try, and if it doesn't work, we'll look at it. We've talked about doing a seasonal thing. We're going to see how it works this summer, and if we have to change it in September, we're certainly willing to do that. We don't have the the, the final answer. Okay. What we're trying to do is, is is find a way to to make it fair to both sides. I know you guys don't think it's fair. The residents don't think it's fair that they have to put up with basically a hotel next to them 365 days a year. Agreed. I mean, we could go back and forth. My time's up, but I'll let these guys, these guys. Go. Thanks. Thank you guys. And we do appreciate your input. A lot of your ideas. They were, we, we brought a lot of that into our thought processes. So I appreciate that. And I think we would ask them to tell us yeah. how you, how you do this summer. Tell us what your experience is after the summer. What's yeah. that? Tell, tell the mayor after the summer, what your experience was with this. I think we, we circle back and we have a town hall on it. Yeah. In the fall. Yeah. And that, yeah. that's, okay. but yeah. 
So just sorry, just one quick follow up. Is there a way through right to know we can see what data you looked at to make the decision about more than three bedrooms or three bedrooms or more is five night minimum requirement? So it was police reports. Yeah, and complaints. If we from put neighbors. in a right to know, would we be able to get that data to do our own analytics as to how that is is, is, a, is a just is was justified Certainly in the ordinance? You could you could Oprah all those right, specific exactly. things absolutely. So so if I, I put an Oprah request in for the analytics that went behind this ordinance decision, so we the, the analytics would be able to get for us that. sitting here in this room, you, right? So listen, what data you right. pulled on from your police reports, yeah. we'll be able to get that information. Try, so what you're trying to say. I think is were there specific analytics that you would find in a file someplace? I don't think you're going to find that. You're, right. You you would want to Oprah the same data that we looked at in our discussions here, right? With our own staff, so and in the in the room. So you could also look. You could also Oprah the the the, the uh, minutes are on minutes of every meeting. So so I'm just so I'm just trying are to our, find out through transparency. Yeah. For example, how many three bedroom homes had how many police uh, complaints, how many four bedroom homes had police clones, et cetera. You, so I will put in a request for a uh, specific for, Oprah as just right, as you described. Right. Exactly. I'll That's put in specific reports and that will be that, that information. And what I'm available. saying is a lot of that information came to us at these meetings, whether it was from public or our chief sitting here telling us these are the problem properties. Yes. Yeah, so what I'm saying, there are police reports available that says these are the the problem properties Going that back are available for at us. least in my yeah. knowledge to, to to 2016 okay yeah great i appreciate probably that. further back yeah i appreciate that because i think it's valuable for everybody residents and and property owners to know what information was used to devise this you, it's ordinance. not going to be conclusive no. you're going to find that there were some things that may or may not have been rentals that could have been I, they I could understand. have could have could have been rentals that didn't necessarily that that particular specific and analytic doesn't right. Lot, right. Does, wasn't triggered right right so. I just I just find it curious because you know there's one thing about counting bedrooms there's nothing about occupancy you can find a two bedroom house that advertises six people can stay there because they got a pull out couch and two bedrooms now that might not be code because it's not a bedroom Correct. in the living room right however they're listed in Ventnor like that in terms of occupancy that could cause just as much noise as six people in a six bedroom house and they all want their own house their own their own bedroom so i'm like you know it's 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 like you can you can vote it up base it on occupancy or base it on bedrooms but i just want to see sort of what was going on up there and yep. i think it's valuable for us who are have invested in this in this community right and we take great pride in our properties and making sure we vet our people. We have only big homes because we want families to come for the summer. And we've said this before, we do not allow anybody over the age, uh, under the age of 28 to rent our properties. That's a pretty high nut bar. Yeah. A lot of kids want to do parties. We're like, nope, because we pre-screen everybody. So, and we also are very particular about kicking people out. If there's noise, we go over there and kick them out immediately. So I just feel maybe there's a bit of a, I know you need to balance it, but I think it feels like a little bit of a, of a one solution versus cracking down on the true problem properties in the city. So thank you for your time. I appreciate right. it. Thanks, Mimi. Sir. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Uh, Michael Lerman, 307 Windsor Drive, Ventnor. Okay. So same thing that everybody was talking about. Just... Uh, is there any flexibility for the minimum of the five day versus like a three day? And the reason I bring that up is, you know, a lot of times, you know, we have some short term rentals and, you know, it's funny for the especially holidays like Memorial Day, we had a minimum five days and we didn't book anything. And then the second we changed it to three days, you know, we were able to do that. We do have a minimum age also of between 25 and 28. So we're not looking to, you know, rent to kids and stuff like that. Uh, but are, is there any flexibility in that? And before you answer that, my other question would be, you know, with the minimums, I certainly understand that, but wouldn't maybe finding the, you know, the owners because the police had to be called maybe be a little more stronger than versus a minimum because by having a minimum and we can have a minimum one, two, three days, whatever, when you get to five, it really affects the amount of revenue that, you know, the individual could generate. Okay. Thanks for your comments. I, I'm I'm not looking to, to change it tonight. 
we're going to, we're going to try how we're, what we're looking at this. We've been talking about this for eight months. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to try where we're at tonight. And again, we'll relook at it in the fall and see how we get through the summer. Um, we're willing to talk about it, but this has been discussed for several months now, and we, we need to move forward with the ordinance as it's opposed. The, the two night minimum was the, one of the biggest complaints from the police department that, that, that anything, all the one night rentals were the ones where most was where the most problems were. So the, the, the only metrics we have to structure this are tying the days and the minimums to the sizes of the units. Mm -hmm. So we tr we're trying to strike a balance with people that we think are going to are going to be more family oriented with longer minimums like other short communities do that have those weekly turnover rentals. Okay, and just 130 seconds, what was the reasoning behind like the tier of the the license and fees? I know That's one is 570 because I know initially it was always 350 and then it went to 500 and now it seems like there's a tier. I'm just curious the philosophy or reasoning behind that. Um, basically, we looked at what other municipalities are doing, and our code office that does all these inspections is overwhelmed with these. We're just completely overwhelmed with these inspections that we have to do. Um, so we need to cover those costs. We're short on inspectors. We have to go we're looking for inspectors now to do this work. We were 250 units two years ago. We're probably pushing 300 right now. I understand that, but it doubled in price from 350 now to $1,000. That doesn't qualify 250 to 300 i'm just saying the matrix don't make sense from our cost it does from, from the cost of the employees from our, from our and cost, the time that, that they cost us to do the work to get it done mm -hmm. that's that's where these numbers come from thank you jim hi my name is kimberly lane 122 north princeton avenue Ventnor. um so you've kind of you know i understand the the minimum night uh, during the season, um, because I have a seven night minimum, hmm. but in the preseason, like even this weekend coming up, the five night minimum is, is going to be gone. Like nobody's coming. Like all the rentals that are out there that qualify, like I'm out of the game. Like all of my rentals will sent empty this weekend next year. So nobody will be here in, in those houses. They'll just be empty. Um, Last weekend, we hosted a, um, a girls' basketball team. There were 10-year-olds, three moms. Um, they came for the weekend. The kids went to the movies at the Ventnor Theater. As we told them, hey, there's a great movie. Go see it. So they went down there. They're going to be out. They're not going to be able to come anymore because they're not going to do a five-night minimum. Um, and I think it was in March, we had a family who had somebody passed away in Margate. They needed a little bit bigger house, you know, to, so everybody to get together for the weekend. Um, no, nope, they can't come now either. So I can understand during the season, especially when it's really busy, but in the, in the shoulder seasons, when the weather is still fairly decent, people kind of do want to come down. There's extenuating circumstances, just like I just mentioned. Um, it just seems a little egregious five nights. It's just, it's just going to kill the business. I mean, it's going to, I'm dead. I'm just now dead in the water. Like I'm not going to make any revenue whatsoever. These houses are going to be dead revenue for me. And so what am I looking at? Am I, am I just going to do the season because five nights is not going to sell? It's just not. Um, or am I going to have to go to a different business? So, you know, maybe we do like, um, recovery home. Or we do something else where I'm not going to be restricted on, on the money that I can make. Is that what I want to do? No, of course not. I really want families to come in here. I've already had several families who've come in here that have bought million dollar homes. So I think there's, you know, there's other answers than I think you guys have done a great job of pulling some things together, but this particular item where it's not fair across the board, where we have the one bedroom, the two bedroom, get really carte blanche, an American Express card that says we can do anything. And then a three bedroom and up, because I have six and seven bedroom homes, we're out, we're dead. And we really are ex carrying a pretty big expense. So I, I really hope that we can revisit this. You guys will be open to it because I can tell you now, um, from a financial bottom line standpoint, I'm dead in the water. Like you guys have just, I'll pay the thousand bucks. I won't even argue with you about that. I get where you're coming from. 
but that whole aspect. But the others, the five days, I don't, I don't even know what to say. I mean, I was just devastated today. I was, I felt like somebody died in my family. So I don't. So I have a question. You're saying that even the Memorial Day to Labor Day season, five days. No. Is not realistic in no, our town. No, people are, you know, like even when we open the bookings up, Tim, like, you know, like how many days you want to come? And I even make the shoulder days super cheap just so we can grab that extra. Maybe they'll stay the night. Um, they don't do it. They're coming down. They want to come in early on Friday morning. So that I get that's a big request, which is fine. I'll let them do that. So they'll go to lunch. They'll go get the gro- their groceries. Um, they're going to go out to dinner that night. So we want them to get here fairly early. So that's fine. Um, they're leaving Monday because everybody's going back to work on Tuesday. So that's three nights. Normally we get, you know, the weekenders, they want to come down on Fridays and I'm willing to even let them come in early on Friday. Let me ask you a question. So, yeah. and I get it. I, I get that's your concern in the off seasons and, and we're certainly willing to revisit that. So, I mean, like I said, we have seven night minimum during right. the week. I, I get it. And I understand that side of, of this business. And again, I'm using that term purposely. So let me ask you this. When someone's going to register or rent the place for that shoulder season, September, October, yeah. when do they start doing that? Um, they're already started. It's already being sold. We have the um, the big race that comes through here. I think there's two of them. There's um, Iron Man. The Iron Man. There's yeah. another one. It's a, There's the AC Marathon, too. Yeah. That's it. Those sell out. I mean, we have people coming in. So with what, what I'm getting at is if, if we could circle back at that time, us as the governing body, and say, all right, let's let's revisit this because we need to get this enacted tonight to get things moving forward so we can start issuing mercantile licenses to the, to the the for this year. So, I mean. But I would be happy to sit down before, say, even in, in July and say, all right, look, let's look at this and see if we can tweak this a little bit more. Yeah, I was just wondering if, you wanted to tweak it for three nights, a period of this year. If you can do it by resolution, resolutions good uh, for a year, right? An then you can amend. Uh, I believe you have to. You would have to do an ordinance. I mean, I could certainly understand in the season parking is tight, but in the off season parking is not that tight. So, From, if it's if it's not an ordinance, we can do it by resolution. But passing an ordinance, you have to amend it by an ordinance. Um, so starting in March, we start booking, you know, a right, weekend or two. Tim, we got to give the other guys a chance. We, we know where you're standing, but, but, but I know what your, your point is, and I'm willing to sit down and, and try and revisit it. The notion that there's a three night, that's the, that's sort of like what the, it make, it does make some sense. Yeah. It, you, you have empty bedrooms, even if you're renting from Monday. So let me ask Mark Friday so if, we, if we amend that tonight to go back from five to three. On the three bedroom. Can we still proceed with the ordinance tonight? I believe that we, we, we still can. You just have to take a vote on it. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, sir. Hi. Uh, George Mucci, 110 North Dudley, Bettner. Um, I had a question, and I have to say, maybe I'm unpopular opinion, but I'm in support of basically what you're trying to do here. I mean, I get it. Um, these are businesses, and they've got to be licensed. I don't uh, know enough about it, and I came late to the party. Um, does this apply? Like, for example, I'm, what I'm looking at is this is my home. It's not a business. I live here all year. If I'm vacationing, if I'm going to visit my sister or going to visit my kids, and I wanted for a couple of weeks to basically, basically make my tax money because I improved my property, my taxes are all up. If I do something like that, if I'm looking at a thousand dollars bringing in, I don't know, three five thousand dollars for a short time like that. That seems onerous for a resident who I'm renting my my primary residence. That's where I live. People are going to be sleeping in my bed. It's not going to be up on Airbnb. It's got to be somebody I know, you know, that's friend of a friend or a friend. Is there any way of a loophole for residents who are renting their categories? So that's two, di- that's two different that? categories. You you would get a rental license, which is something that. But that's short term, though. It's not thirty that's not, days. That's short term. Oh, I see. So, so it's that's how it's categorized. So that's the that's the. So it has to be conundrum. above 30 days. Right. Yeah. And you're saying it would be for more than 30 days. No, no, no. Two weeks. Less. Oh, a couple two weeks. weeks. Yeah. I'm definitely under 30, definitely under a yeah. month. 
I mean, historically, the Ventnor City would rent, people would rent their homes for the summer for the same reasons, because it's, it's always been expensive to live at the shore, and they would rent their homes for the premium and live in them in, in the off season. And that's that still exists, but it's more than 30 days. Yeah, no, I'm not looking to do it for that. That's what I'm saying. Is there any that's sort of a, that's where you're is, there any, is there a loophole for people saying, okay, if you're a resident, if you're talking about your primary home, it's not you live in another home and you're talking about this property. It's the property that is your primary address on your driver's license, where you vote from. But that does that, it give you a loophole to say, okay, yes, you you don't have to pay a thousand dollars if you're renting it for something under thirty or twenty one or fourteen days, whatever it might be. I, I don't think you can. That's the business model that Airbnb began on people people taking their personal homes and well, turning them into. I'm rentals. saying I'm saying one time a year. I'm not saying two right. weeks at a time, fifty right. times. I'm talking about once. We would have to do some research on that because I don't know. I thought I think that's kind of fallen in some really gray that's area. Good. It's also very specific, but we yeah. can we can put that on the list for discussion when we revisit this. Yeah, and like I said, it's not a business for me, so it's not like I'm I'm chopping at the bit I got to do it this summer. But yeah, if we could revisit that in the fall, it's a good question. Yeah, it's a really just, good question. Just because, like I said, it it's not a business for me. But if I'm visiting my kids and I'm the house huh. is empty and I can make my taxes in a couple of weeks, well, see, so I do it. Be. I just make the people watch my dog. I don't charge them anything. So <laughs> make a one a one. But I think you make a good point. In the, and the one time, the one time, one time per household. Yeah, something like that. If, yeah, again, if it's, your, it's your primary yeah. residence. Because you're not looking to give people a, a workaround. You're, get, yeah. you're, you're looking to give people that an opportunity. We're looking to give residents who just want that opportunity, right. not to have their private home as a as a business, but to have that opportunity to, you know, have that short-term rental to just generate. Uh, All right. Mm -hmm. You're, you're negative one minute. You got to be up to the mic and you got to you have to see you got a suggestion. Come on up. You have to be on the record or else it, uh, Jeff Gingel, it doesn't catch. North Oakland. So in Philly, they have two separate licenses. If you're a primary resident, you have, if you can prove it's your primary residence, you get one. If you're not, that's a different license. So you just something to think about. We in the could future, do it by different license. Do, All right. Yeah. So good. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> To to that end, there are towns that require property to be your primary residence in order to put it up for short-term rentals that would address this exact situation. They also, though, limit the number of times in a year that you can do it. So you could craft something hybrid to, to wed into this if you were interested. Right. Okay. I think it sounds like it needs a little bit of a workaround. It it would be a little bit complex to figure out the correct way to do that, because uh, again, you know, you're talking about residential properties here that are being used as businesses. There's a, a gray area there as to whether or not you might be skirting the municipal land use law and the, the designation of the residential property now being openly used as a commercial property. And, That's and a I, question I see. And that, that is a question that that going yeah. forward needs to be looked at. Um, and again, this is you know this is a relatively new phenomenon. We're, you know we've all been dealing with rentals our entire life at the shore, but they were traditionally for a week, two weeks, the whole summer season. The, this idea of one or two nights at a time that was the business of motels and hotels right. and rooming houses. It wasn't residential homes that were being rented for a couple of nights. Agreed. Agreed. Sir? Good evening. John Mazdry, 109 South Surrey Ave. Uh, got a couple of random thoughts, so apologize, a little scattered, but I'll go off the last note first. The IRS does let you rent your house out for 14 nights without tax penalty. So just want to share that little tidbit as a, another idea for your workaround. If you have a home primary residence, maybe get you 14 nights Included, okay, but good anyway, a little tidbit. Um, when I echo the other uh, property managers' concerns here, um, my company, we have about 28, 29 rentals across the shore. My average stay is 4.2 nights. That would mean we're pretty much dead in the water as well. And that is heavily counted by the fact that I do a, a number of you know 30 day and longer rentals as well, weighing in on that uh, on that number there. So looking at the as a business, I think this ordinance is negatively impacting the, the actual business owners who are running and want to be a, a good standing member of their other street of their community of the town here and i don't think it actually addresses the the problem of the the party houses i think it unfairly hurts the, the business owners 
who are doing their job and, and screening guests properly, they're taking care of their properties, they're improving the, the value of their neighborhood and taking care of things, I think it negatively impacts us and actually doesn't address the problem with the parties. Um, Specifically the five day or the, 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 yeah, specifically the five day, not yeah, the whole and, entire and ordinance, not the whole entire ordinance. We're absolutely, you know, want things to be better and want things to be you know organized and, right. and done in a fair way. But five nights is, is really just killing yeah. that part of the business. And again, it is a business. You're absolutely right. And it should be, uh, you know, should have some kind of structure and regulation around it. But the five nights really would kill a lot of our business, a lot of the families and groups and people who come into this town and patronize our businesses. Uh, I mean, we had the, the head of the VBA here, the Veteran Business Association, walk out. We had 40, 50, 60 people here a couple months ago. Everyone seemed pretty around, uh, pretty well united around two nights. Might have been the way to go. And we feel like we're real. The business owners aren't being listened to here. Yeah, you know, we, we seem a little, little bit blindsided by all of a sudden we, everyone was kind of around this two night, maybe three, and all of a sudden we're at five on the big houses. And, and that would really be detrimental to the to the business owners who are actually running a business and taking care of it and want to do things the right way, it would really kind of undercut our entire business. It's almost like saying to a restaurant, you have to have people sit at your table for three hours Completely if they're more than six people, you know. Out of so, place um, com comparison, right. you're running a business Absolutely. in a residential neighborhood. That's what we're trying to work around here. And I'm, you're, you're, yeah. look, we support the business as much as we can. And, you know, I'm not going to go there, but the aspect of, of that business in a in a street, a residential street, that you're not dealing with parking, you're not dealing sure. with with the amount of people you're having on that street, and you're turning it over every four to five days. Sure. So, so that's me, what's a problem. Let me. And that's this. what we're trying to address. So, of course. And I, I want that. I don't want there to be problems either. If I rent a house out for the full season, same size house, same occupancy load, and they have just as many cars, just as many people, or if I'm a primary resident. In that house, and I have friends over, and to, and cause the same problems. But they're more. And there's pl plenty more responsible and things that probably out of time, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. So it's the same people that are here that whole summer. They're accountable. You know, we can go to the door and talk to them and say, "Look, you're doing something wrong here." If right. they're here for the weekend or four or five days, you can't. They're gone. They don't care. So when you go to the owner, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna find you. We're gonna pull your mercantile license. Yeah, I understand. And, and that's that's what we're gonna do. If we have sure. problems with properties, that's what's gonna happen. Um, because we are a residential community. That's what we are. We do have businesses that we, we try to do our best to support. And I think we've done a good job. We, we've had, we had probably 60% vacancy mm. in 2016. When we got in office. You can't find open commercial space now in this city. Right. Not right. easily. Anyway. <laughs> <Commercial broker. laughs> so that, that's, yeah. that's the positive a aspect of this. Yeah. We try, we're trying to find a balance. Maybe it's three nights. It might be. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I just want to ultimately the five nights is is yeah. And I'm really I think we're saying we're open to that. I, I think we're trying to swing. We maybe swing the pen. We don't want to swing the pendulum too far in one direction, but we we need we need to do better than we we've done in the past. I agree for res for the local residents um, in a way that doesn't impact the, the businesses. We also know all the. We also agree. When I the the reason that uh, that we're having free parking is because I rented two Airbnbs for two weeks in different towns and other cities, and I, right. every time I do, I go. Every time I do travel, I use them, but I, I spend money in their downtowns, and then we and that's what people do. We want them to do that here. So I think if we can put a vote and look at three nights for that, for I'm, I'm leaning bedroom, towards supporting that. So. so am I. I mean, we're not, and and maybe we we look at and 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 track the progress of that and see yeah. whether that has made an impact on the calls that the police department is having the nuisance calls i don't think you're ever going to no. please everybody so of if we're going to all walk away a little angry yeah that's, well, that's okay. fair it's all my asking it's a good like I said, that's a good that's a good compromise right yeah ultimately like i said five nights killer three nights will be great and then so I, that's I where we're headed the business owners here that are actually trying to run a business i don't think are, are the problem all right. so all right thank you again. i have a, i have a question for you do you have a minimum age that you rent uh, depends property specific, but nothing's under 21. Most are 25. So, and again, every, every guest of mine is full ID verification. Um, your Surrey house, right? Yeah. Surrey. And then I have another residential yeah, property down too. So okay. same deal. So your average age is 25. Minimum is 25. And 4.3 so nights. At 4.2 nights. <laughs> I know the numbers. It's got All the right, analytics again. down. Thank okay. You. All right. Thank you. Mayor, clarifying something I said before, um, upon further um, looking into the issue, I believe that it would be an issue to amend it tonight and have it be effective tonight. 
I believe there would have to be another public commence night, but then there has to be another public portion. But it March. could be in effect after the no, no. That's going to be a problem for code and mercantile, right? You, you would have we to have, have another public hearing on the amended March, version right. March. and the, the notices for the third party agency that handles the registrations and stuff. That's that's ready to go out tomorrow if it didn't go out today. Can we have a special meeting? Haven't we amended ordinances for one year? Not yeah, amended, we'll about it. Haven't we made changes for a season or a year without amending an ordinance because it was only affected, effective for that year? By resolution. So if we pass this and then did a resolution for the 2023 period by resolution going from five to three would get us around the timing. I thought we've done that with things where we did a resolution, even though we had an ordinance on the books. Like the parking. And it only affected like our, our that parking. year because the resolution is only good for a year. Right. So and then later we would go back to the ordinance. Our parking ordinance is year round, yeah. but we amend it from time to time with a resolution. Mm -hmm. Would we be able to do that here? I think that's a possibility. Okay. I'd have to look into that a little bit. But well, we kind of need to do that. I know you need to know it now. Tom mentioned, um, the, Tom, you mentioned there might be some paperwork that's already gone out to the third party. Meaning the well, the, the I know that the code office was preparing the notice uh, with these regulations ready to have it ready to go with the assumption that this was going to pass tonight. Right. Uh, I mean, this is this is your thing. I mean, yeah. if you want to amend it, somebody's got to make a motion, a second, and take a vote. You can You're grandfathering in. Uh, yeah, we are grandfathering in this summer if they've already yeah. had so, the reservations. Correct. And we so let's. Let, I think and, we can we go tonight. We come back in but two weeks. The resolution. Thank One you. thing that you're that we're missing here, and maybe there's still people right. on Zoom or in the room there are. that are going to speak in favor of the five day. So I, I think maybe right. you ought to go ahead and hear we're what everybody has to say yeah. first. Absolutely. Right. We got one more, one more anti <laughs> before you get to the pros. Uh, my name is Cole Chekhov, 11 South Baton Rouge Avenue. Um, I think it'd be nice to also um, remind ourselves of some of the other alternative solutions. You got to talk in the mic. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be nice to remind ourselves of some of the other alternative solutions that were brought up at, at the last time that that you guys convened about this. Um, one of those things being um, placards. So if there was a noisy property, there would be something at the property saying, this is who you can contact. This is the property manager. If there's an issue with the noise, um, you know, reach out. That, to that is in the ordinance, but it can't be on the exterior of the house. Correct. Okay. There's privacy I, I, issues. Perhaps, and privacy, privacy, privacy issues. So it's on the inside, like a hotel room. It's on the back inside of the door or somewhere okay. inside the unit. So the, the property manager's contact information can't be, you can't mandate that that be shared on the exterior. We were, is that the, is we that were the issue? advised by legal that you can't do that. Okay. So um, I guess just to echo a lot of the things that were said before, I just I'd like to just um, reiterate an example that Kim mentioned. Um, I currently manage five units here uh, in Ventnor. Four out of those of those five, um, the the um, all the guests were here for that same basketball tournament. So five nights, those, those kinds of opportunities to bring people and bring business to Ventnor, you know, it would be over and done with. I think. I think we all think that that the three nights would be a happy medium and and you know a good place to start on um on your end but um I also think that as far as the higher bedroom count properties yes you have a higher occupancy load and so there's you know more of an opportunity for noise but on the same hand um those are the properties that are priced you know the highest you know Kim's six bedroom place could be going for you know six seven eight hundred dollars a night in the peak season that's not you know, the people that are paying thousands of dollars to come to Ventnor for a week, they're not the riffraff that are going to become, they're not the party kids. They're not the college kids. They can't afford to come and spend six grand for we, a week. We understand that, that, that those are the, the ideal properties, right? What we're trying to control is the animal houses that right. we have. Yeah. And there have been larger homes that Good are very, Newport Ave or Nashville Avenue, Nashville on beach on block. a weekend, uh, not even beach block, okay. right, right around the theater. It's a problem. Yeah. That's where this comes to us from. We come, we have residents that were here that adamantly don't want them at all. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to find a balance here that allows res or visitors to come here and stay both in season and off season and keep our businesses going in that, in those times. But we also have to look at, you know, 
residents who live here year round right. that have an issue with this. That bought that million dollar house and they yeah. want to live in it and they're peace and quiet. There are some, some folks that will advertise those large bedroom homes as a party house and that they, and, and having a single, having a one night tends to have a, uh, they, they, you, they, they'll get, you'll get a, um, a bus that drops off, uh, um bachelor party or a bachelorette yeah. party and yeah. that has happened and right. so we're trying to we're trying to find the medium here i yeah. i agree i think that if we can legally work out the three night right. um uh for on board i think that's still a, pr- a step in the right direction yeah fair enough i think it's you know it's a shame that a couple of bad apples ruin it for the rest of us i mean right. all of us get messages hey we have a, our proms coming up we'd like to come right. you know for two night you know we we say no every right. time um last question um how is this going to be enforced? Because I'll tell you right now, me and John and Jeff, we're, we're all going to follow the rule, but it'll be the people who don't follow the rule. Their places will end up getting booked first because they have the shorter minimum. Like it will end up it really impacting us. So we have, we have host compliance that, that monitors this host compliance. That's yeah. right. Yeah. They, they monitor this for us. They're going to monitor the, the nightly minimum they, being. We pay them a fee. Right. Um, and they monitor the sites. And they do that on on those websites. They check that. Trust me, the neighbors are going to start. We part of the issue what we were having was the neighbors didn't want to call to be a bad neighbor. So the message we tried to get out at the last public hearings that we've had on this was: if you see an issue, what's the one that the cops always use? If you see it, say, say it. you know, tell us about it. That's the only way we know that there's a problem. Right. So that way it's documented. So then we know the bad apples. And next time when their mercantile license comes up, hey, we had six noise complaints from you. We had the place, the place was left trashy from your, your site. We've got four or five of those. That way we don't give those mercantile licenses back to the bad apples. And that's how we can weed out those, those problematic properties. So you said it, it's not going to be easy to monitor this. Usually it's someone that has a resident that it's in a, a tight knit residential neighborhood. And one particular house has filled with cars or a midnight opening and closing of doors. And it's a repeat offense. But So we have two ways of, 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 of of measuring it. One is with coast compliance that has access to all the addresses of, and all the, the, the data that, and then we have the neighborhood watch. We also, we also have patrol. Yeah. Okay. So we have to move on. Thank Next you. Person's up. So Diane. Diane, Diane Burke back three North Cambridge Avenue. Um, I want to again, support your view that these are businesses that are being run in residential neighborhoods. When I bought my house, it was very clear that it was a residential neighborhood, that only uh, Atlantic and Ventnor Avenue was allowed to have an office in their house that only had a couple people that would come there or not. They weren't allowed to have, you know, like a storefront. Um, and if you stick to the residential, we're all zoned all through the city. And there's residential, there's mixed use, there's um, rental areas where the uh, bed and breakfasts and the hotel that used to be hotels. And I appreciate you standing by the fact that it is a residential neighborhood and people are saying, well, I have four or five houses, I have four or five houses, and that prevents people from buying a house um, and living in it, whereas people are buying up houses to make them a business in a residential area. So please consider the residents since we don't have a lot of them here tonight. Um, and it seems that they're all business owners. Thanks, Diane. Thank Thanks, Diane. Thanks, Diane. Jeremy Casey, 402 North Suffolk. Um, I have a question about your repeat offenders. Do you have a cutoff or a um, statute of some sort where you're saying you're not going to give the repeat offenders back their license? Do you have policy for that what's the what's the procedure uh, i'd probably have to talk to the police department and, and and the clerk about how they if you can get it back if you i don't know if they can get it back after that but if you're going to violate our ordinances we're not going to give you a license so one time three it, times it's not a one-time thing it, it's it's more or less you know, well, if it's you written, it's written a problematic property yeah. yeah that's my question what, it's, what's it's, the what defines a problematic three property times. Um, I don't know that there's three. is that part of this ordinance or well, or some other ordinance. That's my question. If I may, that that's something that really probably would wind up being at the discretion of the court. These people are 
where there's violations, there are going to be summonses issued, appearance right. required in municipal court. Right. And at a point in time, we will make a request of the judge to revoke their license if, right. if they're repeat offenders. But they're certainly entitled to due process and a hearing before a court. And that's the way that it would go. Yep. You know what? Then Sarah mentioned that last night in Brigantine. And that, so that's, answer, that's where it's going to end up. So to answer your question, you have to be more specific. We, ha we can be, you have to be specific so about. Can, can there the, be, can that be written in? Well, I'm, I'm answering, waste, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm answering your question. So you have to be to specifically a ordinance would have been broken. They would have been, they would have been summonsed and the court would, pro, would the, they would have a court process and it would be up to the judge at that point, noticing, looking, reading the ordinance that the ordinance qualifies this as saying we can remove your license for cause, cause. Yep. and the judge is going to be the determiner of that cause. So to say there's a three strike you're out, that's not our job to say it's we've written the ordinance to give the the attorneys and the the lawyers the ability to do that right can it be your job i don't believe so no i believe okay. it's a, it'll be a court's job okay that's a genuine question um my second question is your increase in fines is that covering um all the extra work that these units are putting in putting so on these the are court fees court? these aren't fines sorry i'm sorry fees i'm sorry my mistake um, is that covering all the extra work that these are put, getting put in? Probably not. Probably okay. not. Can we can we look at that and advise that on the next uh, revision of this? Look, I think the fees are at a point right now where they're they're fair enough. Okay, they, they cover our these guys. Our, our staff does other things than just this. Yeah, sure. This no, I added agree. work for them. I that's so. Point. I, we think we're comfortable where the fees are. Okay. right now. All right. Awesome. We, Thank you very much. We've added staff to that department yeah. over the years, yeah. right? Yeah. This is part of that. Please. You say you've added staff. Has this issue caused you to add staff? This and the huge increase of building permits in the city over the last four years. Okay. Thank you. Tony Morgano, 107 North Derby Avenue, uh, resident, homeowner for 45 years, grew up in Margate. I really don't like this whole thing. Okay. My street this weekend will become a motel. I have four properties up there that have a total of, I think, 14 bedrooms. You can see what's going to happen up that street. So I'll go along with the three nights. But there's a guy across the street. He's got five bedrooms, and he's pretty much every night is a different crew. So, you know, I'm not, a, I, you know, I favor the ordinance, but I'm against the whole thing. Okay. Uh, the whole idea, being a resident, I bought a house. I didn't buy a house. I'm, right now, tomorrow, my street will be a motel. Okay. And I'm one of the people that's against it. Thanks. Thanks, Tony, for coming Thanks, out. Tony. Appreciate it. I think the whole island's going to suffer from that this weekend. So, well, the bridge <laughs> might not be full. The bridge might not close. So, we might. Yeah. You might not have a. Might, that'll, that'll, that you, is not a. Don't even say that. You, anybody? <laughs> it, only half today. It might be an uptick in. Airbnbs on the other on the no. north side of the <laughs> let's read that. Read that. <laughs> because I wish I were all right. Kidding. And we haven't my computer completely shut off. So Here, you can take mine. We have some no, I, I can look at it up there. So um can you put it out on Zoom if anybody wants to comment on anything that was on the agenda tonight that we've already spoken about? Wow. If you run, raise your hand, make it known you want to speak, and we'll recognize you. There were a couple hands up earlier, but like I said, my computer completely shut down. Yeah. Is there anybody? No. No one wants to speak on it? Okay. Really? With that, we'll wait. Oh no. Sorry. We will close the public portion and move into um we'll close the public portion first. Can I get a motion to do that? Motion to close the public portion. Second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now we need to close the workshop and move into our, our formal meeting. I need a motion, please. Motion to close workshop. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll call to order our regular meeting of the Ventnor City Board of Commissioners. First item, we have no approval of minutes. We have the ordinance introduction of 2023-013, Chapter 214, Vehicles and Traffic. And motion to introduce ordinance 2023-013. Motion to introduce ordinance 2023-013. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Mento? Yes. Mayor Landgraf? Yes. All right, we have a public hearing on Ordinance 2023-009, Chapter 79, regarding violations and penalties of operations of motorized vehicles. 
Motion to open a public hearing. Motion to open public hearing as described. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, this hearing is open on the um, increase in fines for motorized vehicles on the boardwalk. Jeremy? Jeremy Casey, for to Nurse Suffolk. Um, I am curious why the police department has decided to crack down on this. There has been zero documented instances of e-bike um, collisions on the boardwalk, yet we had 28 DUIs in season last year. Um, my personal opinion, the class one officers would be better served um, patrolling and enforcing much bigger problems that we have in this city. Um, I've seen plenty of drunk drivers. I've seen plenty of reckless people around. And again, to enforce a non-issue and increase patrols where there's not an issue and increase fines on not an issue and ruin fun for people as far as I'm concerned. Um, I don't like it and I would like a justification for it. Okay, thanks for your comments. Anybody else? Anybody on Zoom want to speak on this matter? None? They can hear us, right? Yeah. All right. With that, motion to close the public hearing on Ordinance 2023-009. I'll, I'll just make a comment. Sorry, Kim. To... That's NC up there. Go ahead. So on the, on the bikes, on the boardwalk, so speeding was the issue initially. And it was regular bikes. It was this, you know, these guys coming in thinking they're on a marathon. That's really the issue. It's it's not what type of bike it is. It's the just the actual bike and who's on that bike. So if we're gonna, you know, I don't I don't think we should discriminate against specific bikes per se. I think it's they were regular bikes and they're flying down the boardwalk like and they they own it, you know, like. So you understand maybe, we're not changing that part of the ordinance. Motorized bicycles or anything has not been allowed on the boardwalk since 1972. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, they, they I, I'm just, just saying it was they just speeding. Is their, their, they've increased their popularity. So I had a discussion with the police chief on the speeding, and to answer your question a little bit directly, DUIs are not something that's to the purview of a class one officer. These are kids that are out of college. They're trained for a few weeks. They go through a course, and they deal with parking tickets dogs and things of that nature small ordinances they learn the streets their radio they're another set of eyes for officers um in the city this the speeding on the boardwalks has been said that we could add radar detectors so the the practicality of that is something that the officers and the police department disagree with you to have to first invest in the equipment and then train the officers that you can then support in court that they have been legally caught speeding and then to put your butt then to somehow stop somebody that's going more than 15 miles an hour on a bicycle with one person is a little bit is not within what the police department feels is practical so the the difference between these bicycles also is that they are heavier they cause more damage to people when they are in a in, a, in an accident and um this is we're, you're talking about some that can go 15 20 25 miles an hour so the and it, whether they're whether it's somebody that is uh and this is a boardwalk that is meant for leisurely biking and walking i think it's meant for biking as well as a person that grew up here i think it's part of our culture to bike on the boardwalk and 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 I would I, I would rather see people be more respectful of each other, but this is one of the tools that we have. But it's it's not it's not a, it's not it's not it's not going to tick all the boxes. But there, if there is somebody that is um, that we can be fortunate enough to catch that's doing this sort of thing, the fines will increase. So we're asking people to be more respectful of each other on a shared boardwalk in a shared experience that everybody can enjoy at a leisurely pace, which is 15 miles an hour on the boardwalk. So, sorry, Mimi D'Souza, 122 North Princeton. A, a low tech solution is uh, uh, basically speed bumps or speed humps or speed things. When, when you're in the bad sections of Atlantic City boardwalk, it's painful to ride on it. <laughs> so, a bad, bad boardwalk. Bad, bad, right bad. bad. People have a great boardwalk. It's nice and smooth, and that's probably yeah. some of the problem. But anyway, it's just jokingly, but a, a low-tech solution, we put some 
speed humps along, not big ones, just ones that interrupt somebody's pleasure of going fast. So it's also a boardwalk. Right. So people will trip over those speed humps. <laughs> and our, our Mel Jiff group will yeah, not allow us to put anything uh, on there. No, they trust they, me. They, 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 they walk the boardwalk. And if there's a least little bit of a hump, we are we have to fix that. We, all, we also no. tried to hire eight um eight 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 specials to to make more of a statement um but we were only able to find a, and attract five so that's working it's not a, it, it was it's difficult to find those types of people that are willing to put themselves in front of har harm's way and also enforce our our uh, law but it, but it, it is a great program we tend to find people that are uh find their way into law enforcement and work for the city in some other manner or decide whether that's correct. That's right for them. But um, uh, so that's where we're at. So at our last meeting, we had a resident whose husband can't really walk very well. And he, he, the battery allows him to, to access the boardwalk on, on a bicycle. I'm working with both um, Mark as well as the police department. I reached out to chief for his thoughts on it. It's going to be cumbersome. We're going to try and come up with a plan that allows someone who is officially handicapped, ADA compliant. They have they have the placard in their car. And they they have a doctor's note that can get them that. They would show that information to the police department, and they would get some sort of tag or something for their bicycle that we could put on there that would allow them to to ride along the boardwalk as with an ADA placard, if you will. Um, not a big bright sign on them or anything like that, but just something that if if an officer or somebody sees them with it, they can yeah. say, all right, you're allowed to be on here and not harass them. So similar to Airbnbs, we're not alone in this. Seattle City does not allow them at all. Ocean City does not allow them at all on the parkways and the walkways that are public parkways that other people share. That's why we have bike lanes. So we're we're really just looking to enforce the rules we have and increase the- Or you can go on Atlantic City. Well, they're having the same issue. Um, all right. So again, we'll put it out to the public one more time, just because we're continuing the conversation. Anybody on Zoom want to comment on the motorized uh, vehicles on the boardwalk ordinance? Seeing none, I'll look for a motion to close. Motion to close. Second. Public. All in favor? Uh, yeah, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> Need a motion to um, adopt Ordinance 2023-009, uh, Chapter 79, Section 7, regarding violations of penalties of operation of motorized vehicles. Motion to adopt ordinance as described. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble. Yes. Commissioner Mento. Yes. Mayor Langria. Yes. All right. We'll have another public hearing on Ordinance 2023-010, uh, adding Sections 197, 11.1. Littering and care and containment of construction sites. In a motion to open a public hearing. Motion to open public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, anyone have any comments on the construction fence ordinance on Zoom? Seeing none, anyone in the chambers? Seeing none, motion to close. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I need a motion to adopt ordinance 2023-010. Motion to adopt ordinance 2023-010. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble. Yes. Commissioner Mento. Yes. Mayor Langram. Yes. Uh, public hearing on ordinance 2023-011, which is registration of rental, rental units to impose inspection requirements for lead-based paints. Need a motion for public hearing. Motion to open public hearing as described. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, this hearing's open on ordinance 2023-0111. Excuse me. Anyone on Zoom? No. Seeing none, we'll close the public portion on, on Zoom. Anybody in the chambers? Seeing no one, we'll motion to close. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Let's see. Adoption of ordinance 2023-011. Need a motion, please. Motion to adopt ordinance 2023-011. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble. Yes. Commissioner Mento. Yes. Mayor Landgraf. Yes. Okay, so okay. how do we handle it? So the public hearing on ordinance 2023-012, we're going to open that. Need a motion to open that, please. Motion to open public hearing on ordinance 2023-012. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So this is the, the rental, the short-term rentals. Um, I would like to amend this to three nights. I do too. Um, I do too. I, we I, do I that. think just the flow of the obvious flow of, of the weekend, the things that were stated. Right. Um, it doesn't seem practical or le with right. the logistics that someone, I personally wouldn't yeah. rent it for five the, days. Uh, I, was, I was coming for a weekend, but three I would. So what's your thoughts on, on amending it immediately after the resolution? Can we do that? Or can we do it at the next meeting to amend it? I think you could do it at the next meeting uh, to amend it. You'd have to give the public notice because uh, it's, so, it's so you're a significant saying, change. You know what, let, me, let me step back. If we amend this to three nights, we cannot adopt it tonight. So That's correct. Saying. Okay. Can we do the resolution then? But you you can it? amend it and put it on public hearing for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. So you can amend two it weeks. tonight. You can amend it tonight, and then you need another right. public hearing right. on the amended version. In two weeks. In two weeks. And then you can adopt it in two weeks. Yeah. Yep. Yes. All right. So there's a two week window. You there. think how does that code and, and mercantile is just going to have to? We'll deal with it. Yeah, we'll deal with it. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to make a motion that we we pull the adoption of this ordinance tonight. No. And, uh, the, the motion is to make the to amendment. amend it. So somebody spell out what the amendment. Yeah. Is. All right. The amendment would be to change. I'll read it through here. And this would be. Um, two days okay so the, the third it's not even a whereas but residential properties containing three or more bedroom must obtain display of annual mercantile license the fee for which will be a thousand dollars three bedroom residential units may be rented short term for a period of not less than three days three instead days. of five mm -hmm. correct but less than 30 days and that would be the only change that i would recommend agreed yep so i'm making a motion to amend that ordinance um with that caveat Motion to amend ordinance as described. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Mento? Yes. Mayor Langrand. All right. So what that'll now do is we will have to have another public hearing on that at our next meeting. Yes. Correct. Okay. And then we can adopt it. And it's yeah. is it more days after that or is it effective immediately? It's effective immediately. Okay. M immediately upon publication. Public. Yes. Fine. Publication. Same, same as it, same as it would have been tonight. Yeah. So, so however long it takes after there. adoption to publish, Thursday, it'll be in the newspaper. Okay. So I just have one question. Yep. Am I going to keep that same number, or do I got to give it the ordinance a new number? No, you keep the same number. Okay. Okay. Right. I noticed some chime in chimes in on the people raise their hand, Cindy. Just people joining. Okay. All right, so we don't have to do another public hearing on that because we're not adopting it. So oh, we're not we're not adopting next meeting. No, next okay, meeting. we can't. Oh, okay. you're, you're, we you're not. I see. So I see. Now I follow. All right. Go. Next item is resolutions twenty twenty three one seven two two one eight five by consent. Can I get a motion, please? Motion to adopt resolutions twenty twenty three one seventy two through one eighty five as described. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Mento? Yes. Mayor Langrand? Yes. Okay. Approval of bills and payroll. Or Lisa, you have that? Yes. I have bills in the amount of $5,185,949.12. I have payroll from the period of April 30th through May 13th in the amount of $603,816.03. Okay. I need a motion to approve bills and payroll as stated by our city clerk. Motion to approve bills and payroll as described. I second, and I recuse myself from PO 23-01084-01. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Mento? Yes. Mayor Landgraf? Yes. Announcements and safety report. Safety report is noted on our agenda. Um, announcements, I don't think we really have any of those. We do have commissioner comments. I have a bunch, but they're... Their events. Yeah. Um, I have them written down. So I like to share them with everybody, but you guys, because they're all of our events, but I have them written here. So if you want me to go through them, if I miss one, you guys fill them in. Great. How's that sound? Um, so Memorial Day weekend starting tomorrow, the pier all the way out to the end will be fully open at no cost for residents and visitors to walk out there and enjoy the pier. Um, you can take a look at the new kiosk. Um, 
the reason it's open is because we don't have a gate yet. Right. <laughs> a gate will be in next week. Um, some things were delayed. So go out and enjoy the pier. The kiosk looks fantastic. I don't know if you've been up there at night, the lighting in it is mm. really cool. Yeah. Came out, came out really good. I like the, um, it's interesting The the screen made out of IP was a construction change that the builder of the first building just kind of, we talked out on the fly and yeah. said, you know, this was, this was going to be made out of, uh, um azac on the p- original pier building but um i'd like to build it out of ip i think it'll weather nicely and it's mm-hmm. really one of the nicer features of the two buildings it is. It, it's distinctive all the way around you can just see it good from yeah. the boardwalk all the way up by by the uh headquarters that's the i think that's a good stuff of the pro- yep. process when you have a good builder that thinks outside the box a little bit yep good deal um as andy mentioned and, and i said i was going to mention again the farmer's market starts tomorrow at 8 30 uh, right here at St. James Church. So that'll be every Friday from now until Labor Day, right, Andy? So come out and enjoy. It should be a fun day. It's going to, weather's going to be good tomorrow. It'll be a little breezy, a little extra weights on those tents, Andy. Um, Saturday morning, we will have the ribbon cutting on our new Ventnor City Beach Patrol headquarters, also at 8.30 up on Suffolk Avenue in the beach. Um, well, the three of us will be there, a bunch of lifeguards because they're coming in for, for – um, Roll call in the right. morning. So we'll also open the be- officially open up the beaches um, on that at that time as well. We're not fully staffed yet, but the main yeah. beaches will we be have open. Four, four beaches. Four beaches. Mind. That I don't have written down, so you can hit that if you want. Oh, that's right. Um, concert in Newport Avenue will be Saturday night, um, 6 p.m. Citron is Latin party music. Mm-hmm. So that'll be 6 p.m. There'll be food trucks there as well. Um, so enjoy that uh, in, in our great city. On Sunday morning at 9 a.m., you have to be there earlier if you're going to run uh, the Kenny Whale and Run from our, our VC um, fire department uh, is putting that on. It's the 51st year, I think, of this running mm-hmm. uh, of, of this event. It's a great event that, that recognizes uh, our, our one fireman who, who lost his life during the line, in the line of duty, um, Kenny Whalen. So come on out and support that. Even if you don't run, I think we have it raises scholarship. Raise scholarship money. They give away about seven or eight thousand dollars every year yeah. to local kids going to college. So it's, it's a really good event. Um, really well attended. You ran one year, I uh, think I recall. Most years. I'm going to skip it this year. Okay. But there's a, they, they actually have, um, they actually have firefighters that do it in full gear. Yes. As well, sort yep. of as a tribute yep. to, the, to Ken. Yeah. And it's, the there's, there's backpack, stuff for kids to do, the, all, the, <laughs> all the fire equipment's there. And it's a, it's a fun day. Yeah. Uh, it's not a long run. I think it's only it's a 5k is it a 5k yeah, i'm thinking of the fun left. one it's a yeah mile. yeah the 5k all right good it's a big event it's usually uh, sold out sold out sold out every year <laughs> um monday we will have two ceremonies well we won't really be hosting them. vfw will be hosting them monday morning at 9 30 right here at the cambridge avenue at the flagpole we will have a service honoring our veterans of foreign wars or veterans in in total and then 11 a.m there'll be another service a more formal service up at the VFW on uh, Dorset Avenue. So please try to attend one or or both of them if you can. Um, that's all I have. That was a lot. Um, I think you got them all too. Yeah, I wrote them down. Suffolk Avenue, Dorset Avenue, New Haven Avenue, Lafayette Avenue are the beaches that are going to be open because typically we have uh, lifeguards are college students, high school students, teachers that are still doing those yep. things. And then uh, when the full season opens, we'll be looking at new guards, beach patrol, junior lifeguards, that, the whole, yeah, camp, the whole camp starts, I mean, camp starts soon. Tryouts start this week, too. Or training starts. Training for yeah. tryouts. Yeah. 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 All right. You have anything? No, uh, I think there's the lifeguard camp for kids is coming up, too, but it, would usually, it should be posted yeah. soon. It will be. Yeah. yeah. I think that's in July, right? Yeah, I was talking to David. Now. He was going to make sure it was up by this weekend to Good. register. Yeah. Good. Someone was asking me, so I reached out to him. Okay. Yep. Um, with that, we'll need a motion to open the public comment for anything anybody wants to talk about. Please step forward, state your name, and make your comments. Anyone? I'm going to start with Zoom. Uh, motion to open public comments. Yeah. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Anyone on Zoom, please. Make yourself known. Raise your hand. Let us know if you want to make any comments. I'm wondering if they can. Is that working? Yeah, There's a lot of people on there. No one is coming. Same thing. Like so. Okay. All right. All right. That's it. 
Somebody can summon it. Nanette, can you raise your hand just to make sure we know you can hear us? See, I told you there's a problem. No, because they'd be, type, people just they'd be typing them. if they couldn't hear. One lady replied, three nights would be much better than five, of course. You can read that from here? I can. <laughs> can you believe it? That's real. So what would you say, Cindy? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So I hear you. I hear you. All right. All right. Good. Good. So anyone in the in the chambers, Andy? I tried to encourage my wife to she's on. <laughs> but she turned down. I said, make some comments about the farmer's market, but maybe she can anyway. I don't, I'm not sure now. Well, the net said they can, they've been hearing us and they've been commenting. So, okay. Okay. I just wanted to um, thank again, all the departments in the city for helping us with the farmer's market. Um, as recently as yesterday, Lisa's department, Cindy was helping with a new vendor who's bilingual and we were struggling with language issues and Lisa's mm -hmm. department and Cindy specifically stepped to the plate and had multiple phone calls with this vendor uh, and it really helped us out a lot. Just little things like that. The fire department, I know not represented anymore, but they were helping us as recently as today with a, a vendor with open flame issues in terms of inspections. And it was a little bit, the vendor was a little behind and fire department stepped to the plate and they were working it out today. So little things like that, that nobody really knows that really helps take the edge off for us. So I just wanted to Say thank you again. And everybody, come on out. We'll be there. Can't wait. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Andy. Lots of new uh, vendors this year, too, I think, right? It's grown. The number of vendors has grown every year, it feels like. Is the dumpling guy coming? <laughs> <laughs> Very specific request. He was at the um, block party and was interested in the farmer's. Dim sum? No. no. Those were really good. Tacos. Tacos. All right. What city? There you go. Okay. All right. No one else in the chambers? Motion to close, please. Motion to close. Public comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And no executive session? No, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for our last.